On today's show, the Capitals have a lot of off-season questions about players. Who's going to be coming and who's going to be going? One player that deserves a whole lot more consideration on the big team is Ethan Frank. Will next season be the season for Ethan Frank? I'll discuss next on this edition of Lockdown Capital. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and uh, welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. I've covered the Capitals for the last three seasons for Locked On and various other platforms before that. I'm also the host of the weekly show called The Capitals minute cast available wherever you find your podcasts you can find me on twitter it's at dan caps 218 you can find the show on twitter it's at locked on caps and the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to locked on capitals on youtube and comment anything down below today's episode is brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nhl for 20 dollars off your first purchase so in this edition of locked on capitals we talk about the questions facing gm brian mcclellan and who is ultimately going to be on this team in the fall Oftentimes on this show, I talk about what needs to be done on July 1st. What big acquisitions does BMAC need to make to make this team a whole lot better? But do they have a lot of good internal options down in Hershey? I'll talk about that a little bit later. We will talk about how I believe that next season needs to be the season for Ethan Frank. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We'll talk about Joe Snively and what his future plans are. And also kind of a guy that flies under the radar, Bogdan Treneev. What is his future with the Bears and what is his future at some point with the Capitals? But just to get it going here, talking about the Bears that lost tonight. I was hoping that I was going to be able to come to you guys on the show tonight and tell you about a big win and that the Bears are moving on to the next round, but the Cleveland Monsters had a lot of pushback, so uh, it will take at least one more game to decide the outcome of all of that. But one player has stood far and above everyone else as far as I'm concerned, and that is Ethan Frank. And to be fair, there's a lot of great players down in Hershey, but Ethan Frank is a guy that uh, I was a little bit disappointed last season, didn't get a look on the team. The fastest guy in the AHL and the NHL, faster than Connor McDavid himself, uh, that it definitely fits the narrative of what this team wants to do in getting younger and faster. Will next season be the season uh, that we get a look at Ethan Frank on the big team? You know, that's what I'm talking about. We have a lot of internal talent, I think. And, you know, Ethan Frank is just one of many players, I think, that are due for a promotion. Um, so I think that, you know, before we go out and make any big moves, I still think some big moves need to be made, make no mistake about it. But I also think they could shore up uh, certain things internally with options primarily in Hershey. But just to get it, talking about one player in particular in this first segment, we'll talk about Ethan Frank and how big he has been for the Bears, and I think ultimately will be for the Capitals. The Hershey Bears are making a strong push in the Calder Cup. It could have ended all tonight, and they could have gone on to the next round, thanks in large part to players like Ethan Frank. After narrowly missing out on a call-up by the Washington Capitals earlier this season, Frank has been showcasing his talent in the AHL playoffs and is proving himself as a serious NHL prospect. I do believe that's true. Uh, again, much like last summer, and if you're an everyday of the show, you know, I spoke about that, you know, it was supposed to, it had to be this season for Connor McMichael this past season, and it was. 
I think that next season needs to be the season for Ethan Frank to see what he has. Leading the Hershey Bears with nine goals in 10 playoffs games, Frank has demonstrated remarkable chemistry alongside Hendrik Slapier and Joe Snively, Scoring in each of the last game, six games played, seven games rather, Frank has been the X factor that has propelled Hershey back to the Calder Cup final. And just taking a look at his stats, and it's not just the playoffs in particular. He has been playing outstanding uh, for quite some time. Let's just take a look at the 23-24 season in particular. In 64 games played, 29 goals, 18 assists, good for 47 points. Wow, I think the Capitals could use a player like that. Let's take a look back the year before the 22-23 season in 57 games played, 30 goals, 19 assists. There's a lot to like about that. Um, And then we take a look, like I said, at the Calder Cup here in 10 games played, nine goals, three assists. Hey, if there's anyone out there that's waving their hand saying, hey, coach, put me in. Uh, It is definitely Ethan Frank, and I do think uh, that he is due for a promotion. His stellar performance in the playoffs has not gone unnoticed. Frank's production and contributions to the Bears' success have earned him a rightful shot at the NHL spot next season. His capability to make a significant impact on offense and his impressive two-way play have positioned him as a top prospect for the Capitals. I do believe it, and um. Again, I think, you know, oftentimes we do hear that this team needs to get faster. It is one of the oldest teams roster wise in the NHL. Why not add a guy who's got a need for speed uh, like Ethan Frank? It just seems like a no brainer for me. As Frank's contract with the Bears comes to an end this summer, his dazzling performance in the playoffs has created an interesting scenario for his next deal. Expected to become a restricted free agent with arbitration rights, Frank has garnered attention across the league and is in line for a well-deserved reward for his exceptional play. Now, wouldn't that be an unfortunate scenario that if another team scooped him up, like, hey, you know, the Capitals need to make good on prospects, and they've taken steps by leaps and bounds over previous head coaches and that kind of thing. We saw, you know, Connor McMichael and Hendricks Lop here and even Mirshnashenko and those type of players Get an opportunity, to be honest, I don't think they would have got those same opportunities in years before. So they're making, you know, slow steps in the right direction. But I do think they need to make good uh, on giving Ethan Frank a new deal and and at least giving him a nice long look on the big team in the fall. With his speed, versatility and ability to make an impact at both ends of the ice, Frank represents the type of player the Caps need to bolster their offense. It is anticipated that Frank will secure a one-way deal and is poised to earn a promotion to the NHL next season to make a significant impact with the Capitals. I think he could be an absolute game changer. And we got, you know, some good looks at players that I wanted to get a look at. Uh, Scarbosa, we got a a look at Pierre Dubé. And uh, all things considered, pretty good. I mean, I guess Pierre Dubé didn't pop off the page as much as I had hoped, but it was a pretty small sample size. I think the Capitals need to get... You know, a nice long look at Ethan Frank and see what he does on the big stage. You know, I know that the AHL is still pro hockey and it's just one step down, but um, I want to see what he can do against some of the best of the best in the NHL and uh, and to kind of take it from there. From the time being, however, Frank remains focused on helping the Hershey Bears to win back-to-back Calder Cups. That is the hope. Uh, again, I was hoping that I would be able to come to you guys tonight saying that they're moving on to the next round, but in any event, uh, it will take a game, at least one more game. His determination and performance in the playoffs have not only elevated his status as an NHL prospect, but have also added to the excitement surrounding his potential next contract. So uh, he is definitely going to be due for a promotion. I hope uh, that they do the right thing and they don't squander an opportunity with a premier talent uh, down with the Bears because just based on how well the Bears have played, I think that many of those players have kind of grown out of playing in the AHL that either we need to find a spot for them on the big team or maybe some of those players we need to view as assets and flip them for NHL ready talent. I think that Ethan Frank 
deserves a home within the Capitals organization on the big team with the red sweater on. Let's make it happen next season. So it's not just Ethan Frank. Joe Snively is another guy that's been playing well for the Hershey Bears, but he may have different plans for the future. I'll discuss straight ahead. Game time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off with killer last minute deals, all in prices and views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. And it's not just NBA tickets. It's also MLB tickets. And listen, life is busy. Oftentimes, you know, you get busy, forgot about getting tickets. Fear not with the game time uh, app. It actually makes it cheaper to get tickets closer to tip off or first pitch so take the guesswork out of buying nba finals tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nhl for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code l-o-c-k-e-d O-N-N-H-L for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So Joe Snively is a guy, to be honest with you, I'm surprised has not found a spot on this team, the big team, uh, yet I know he's had a cup of coffees with the team, you know, call ups here and there, but has ultimately not found uh, a steady job up on the big team. I know that there's been injuries that have hampered it in previous seasons, but now it appears that Joe Snively may be heading out of town. And should, as Capitals fans, how concerned uh, should we be about that? So, off season decisions for the Caps, the Washington Capitals face a pivotal off season as they prepare to make a crucial decisions and strategic moves to bolster their roster for the upcoming season. With free agency on the horizon, the organization is focused on shaping its roster for the future. We see that with the integration of the younger players. Uh, we're seeing that, you know, the small steps have made for it on the blue line with Rasmus Sandin and Martin Farivari, those kind of players. Um, as you are seeing players like Nick Backstrom step away, TJ Oshie is within question. Alex Ovechkin is within, you know, the back nine of his career in the NHL that they need to have their eyes fixed to the future. Joe Snively's impact and potential departure. Those are causes of concern. Joe Snively is at the center of attention as the Capitals offseason unfolds with an impressive track record in both the AHL and NHL. Snively's impending unrestricted free agency has drawn significant interest reports linking him to potential opportunities in the KHL have sparked speculation about his future with the Capitals. Um, so again, that is an, again, he is a guy that I saw having a role on the team. It just seems like he never got the chance that there was other guys that got bumped ahead of him. Um, and we've seen this before with other players in the Capitals organization that it seemed like it was going to be their time and it was never their time. It was other guys promoted around and when it probably should have been the player like Joe Snively himself. So what is it? Why would Joe Snively want to leave the Capitals for the KHL? Well, it's money and playing time. Ultimately, as a highly regarded forward, Snively finds himself weighing the allure of the KHL as he approaches free agency the potential for a higher salary and increased playing time at the highest level presents an enticing prospect for the Virginia native. As he contemplates his next career move, the possibility of a KHL venture adds an intriguing dimension to his future in a professional hockey. And, you know, sometimes that works out for those guys. They go over to the KHL and, you know, if they put in their work and they're worth their salt, they'll find a job in the NHL. Or maybe he'll just be content playing in the KHL. 
that I'm not too sure. And I understand that the KHL is the premier league over in Russia. Uh, but, you know, I think that for most players, they would like to find a job, uh, you know, within the NHL. Uh, so it's interesting that that is the position that he's going in. You think that he could, you know, get some interest with a, a team within the National Hockey League. But that is his decision to make. Talking about his career and potential impact with a track record of success in the AHL and glimpses of potential in the NHL, Joe Snively's career trajectory has been marked by promise and ambition. Despite his contributions to the Bears and limited opportunities at the NHL level, Snively stands at uh, the the pivotal career-defining decision moment in his career. His agility, skill, and potential impact as a five foot nine, one hundred and seventy-six pound winger have garnered attention both domestically and internationally. And it's a bit early here. He could ultimately end up signing a deal. Uh, I guess, you know, with the Capitals or the Bears or another team in the NHL, it's just, it seems the direction it's going of the KHL. Uh, Taking a look at the dynamics of the Capitals roster, the Capitals navigate the offseason landscape and the potential departure of Joe Snively. The team's roster dynamics come into focus, the ripple effect of Snively's decision on the team's composition and future moves adds an intriguing layer to the organization's offseason planning. Um, I think that uh, the move out there by Brian McClellan is to make good on that top six forward that we've heard about for the longest time, but also to, you know, grow from within. That is another thing that BMAC has said that he wants to, uh, to, to grow some talent internally and promote from within. uh, Like I talked about in the first segment, Ethan Frank, those kind of players in the midst of free agency speculation and roster considerations, the Capitals are poised to make calculated decisions to shape the roster for the upcoming season. So, you know, interesting questions for the Capitals. Which players do they ultimately want to go all in on that they're going to, you know, have a bigger role on the Capitals? And which players do they, you know, view as, hey, let them go? You know, uh, again, it's a bit surprising to me about Joe Snively in a lot of ways, but uh, if there's not a spot for him on this team, then I think that's ultimately the right thing to do, uh, that he can get on with his career and the Capitals and the Bears, they can get on with their organization and you know, kind of get this team molded in the direction that they want to go in kind of push up the players that have been waiting for their opportunity, like Ethan Frank, uh, those type of players and uh, the other players. If there's not that everyday spot for them uh, playing for the bears or the capitals, maybe they should move on to the next one. All right. So we talked here about Joe Snively, but there's other players that potentially could be due for a promotion. And the player I'm going to talk about next is a guy that flies a bit under the radar. His name is Bogdan Trinev. Does he have a future with the Capitals and where does he fit in with the Bears? I'll discuss straight ahead. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It is your team every day. So Bogdan Trinev is a guy that uh, has a, a name that's been floated around uh, the Capitals organization. If you follow not just the Capitals, but the Hershey Bears, you are familiar with a player that has a bit of an unusual name, uh, but I think has an upward trajectory. And I think that, you know, I don't know if he's going to fit into the Capitals plans next season, but potentially could be uh, in kind of the mid to long term plans, but he is, you know, pl- making an impact uh, for the Hershey Bears. And I think that, you know, his play down there and uh, kind of the, the, you know, the direction that this team is going in, I think that that is where the traction lies. Taking a look at his performance in the AHL, Bogdan Trenev has been making a name for himself with an outstanding performance with the Bears. During the regular season, he showcased his capabilities with nine goals and seven assists, totaling 16 points in 63 games for Hershey. So taking a look at it, nine goals and seven assists, that's not necessarily setting the world ablaze, but, uh, you know, he could be, you know, a good fourth liner, you know, kind of like a Beck Malenstein or something like that. Um, I think that he does kind of fit Uh, a role similar to that. And if you take a look at his scouting report, he has taken steps of growth. Uh, Before I was doing the show, I did take a look at his scouting report. He said, a true power forward with a good offensive tool set 
strong puck mover on the power play, but refuses to shoot, needs to add more muscle to fill himself out. Uh, that's kind of a common thing that we've heard about these young guys making their way up. We heard that about Hendrick Slop here and Connor McMichael, that they're good hockey players, but they need to bulk up a little bit because they're getting driven off the puck. Um, and I think that Bogdan is making uh, steps in that direction. In the playoffs, he continued to make an impact, telling four assists and demonstrating his prowess on the team's fourth line. Treneyev's consistency and instrumental role in the team's Calder Cup run in the first full North American season, have not gone unnoticed. Um, and he is that guy that is trying to claw his way, trying to find an everyday role, uh, maybe advance himself with the Hershey Bears and see where it goes from there. Talking about his playing style and physical presence, standing at six foot three and weighing 198 pounds, he's got the, the, the height, not necessarily the bulk at 198 pounds. Triniev is a physical presence on the ice. Excelling in bottom six role akin to Beck Malenstein, his strong defensive awareness, willingness to battle for pucks along the boards, and fearlessness in getting in front of shots make him a versatile and valuable player for the team. And uh, you saw another guy that I forgot to mention in previous uh, segments here was Beck Malenstein. He was a guy that was waiting for his opportunity. And we saw how clutch he was for the Capitals on the fourth line with Nick Dowd, uh, Nicholas Abe Cubell, uh, that uh, those players definitely, you know, can can find roles on the team. And it's interesting, you know, if you take a look at Nicholas Abe Cubell and say he gets you know, dealt or, you know, he's not here anymore next season, uh, that that could be a potential opportunity for a player like Bogdan Treniev. Could that potentially be him or is he still, does he still need a little bit more time to simmer down in the AHL? Treniev's ability to find the right positions on the ice and make significant contributions away from the puck highlight his potential as a competent power forward. Again, six foot three, good, 198 pounds, a little lanky. I think that if he could bulk up a little bit, hit the gym, you know, consult a nutritionist a little bit, uh, we saw it work. We saw that uh, uh, Hendrick Slop here in particular looks a lot more bulked up. I would say the same thing goes for Hendrick Slop here because when they first came and they got their opportunities with the Capitals, they also got driven off the puck a little bit easy. Um, so I think that that would be a good advice uh, for Bogdan talking about the potential for the Capitals. Like I spoke about uh, that, there is going to be some pieces moving this summer. I, I know that uh, July 1st, there's going to be players departing. There's going to be players coming in, that kind of thing that could open the door for him in some sort of capacity with his remarkable play away from the puck and his ability to find the right positions on the ice. Trinav has emerged as a promising prospect for the Caps, his potential to replace departing players and compete for a roster spot in D.C. next season speaks volumes about his growth and abilities. Uh, he is not going to be the guy that uh, is going to be that top six forward. He's not going to be the guy that's going to score 20 to 30 goals. He is going to be a Beck Malenstein-esque player, and that's okay. Beck Malenstein played a huge role for the Capitals. We need more players like him as well. Treniev's progress and maturity throughout the 23-24 season present promising signs for the Caps and could potentially earn him a call-up uh, to the Capitals in the near future. And I think that's where it will start for him. I would be surprised if he breaks camp with team with the team, but you know, stranger things have happened. We remember, oh man, it's been a, a couple of years already that Alexei Protus did that. He played so well in camp that uh, they couldn't send him down to Hershey. Um, and, you know, that was a bit of a, a surprise. So that could be the same thing for Bogdan. Uh, it's just going to remain to be seen what happens the rest of the Calder Cup playoffs here. And, you know, if he gets an invite to camp, which I imagine he will in the fall, how does he perform there? Um, that, you know, it's we don't know. I mean, there's a lot of unknowns, as we know right now, is that July 1st is some time from now. And then once those pieces kind of start to fall into place, you see that this guy got moved out, this person moved in then I think that it'll be a little bit more clear what the future is for players like Ethan Frank or Bogdan Triniev um, or those type of players. But the one thing I know uh, from watching the games in the Calder Cup is there is a lot 
of premier talent uh, down in Hershey. And, you know, it's it, with the net minding, it's on the blue line, it's the scoring forwards, it's the head coach. It's a complete package down in Hershey. And I think, you know, to a certain extent, a lot of untapped talent uh, that uh, could potentially bolster this team in the future. So you don't necessarily have to, you know, replace all of the older players on the team with guys from outside of the organization pick up a couple dynamic scoring forwards and then fill in the rest with guys from down in Hershey that, you know, uh, not just give them the jobs, but if they are deserving of it, uh, give them a look. I think that Ethan Frank, like I talked about in particular, deserves a long look and potentially Bogdan Treneyev as well. Uh, he's trending in the right direction and a lot to feel hopeful uh, about as Capitals fans. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are ultimately what makes this show successful. When you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 sports streaming channel available on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app and on YouTube. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.